Hello, my name is Yusef, and today I am introducing a very interesting feature called Feature Store. I'm pretty sure you all know this feature, but now we have an integration with Unity Catalog. And to get started, you will need a database runtime 13.2 for machine learning or uh, a standard runtime. But if you are using a standard runtime, make sure to use the pip install uh, in order to install the Databricks feature store uh, library. For this specific example, we will use the New York uh, yellow uh, taxi fares. We will start by uh, we will start by having uh, or uh, by using this specific diagram. So we will have our row data, and from this row data, we'll create uh, two uh, feature table feature uh, feature store table. We're gonna create the pickup feature and the drop of uh, features. And then those two tables will be used for to join it with the raw data to train a model. Then we're going to register this model and we'll do the, the serving. Of course, you can uh, use this data set. It's on DBFS. Uh, just look for the Databricks uh, underscore data sets and look for New York taxi with uh, zip code. And I will uh, display uh, display the data, and you will see how uh, the data looks like. And then uh, in the next step, what we will do, as I mentioned, we'll, we'll compute uh, two uh, tables. The first one will be the pickup features, and the second one will be the drop-off features. Of course, uh, here we're going to compute two new columns or two new features. The first one will be the count trips. So we'll use a window of one hour and we're gonna slide by 15 minutes. And we're gonna also compute the, the mean fair amount of course, by having a window of one hour and uh, a sliding of 15 minutes. That would be the same window. And for the drop off features, we're gonna count a number of trips within a window of 30 minutes and whether the trips end on a weekend or not. So let's go back to the uh, table. So we have the uh, pickup daytime, the drop off uh, daytime, the trip distance, the fair amount, pickup zip, and the drop off zip. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna create two helper functions. So the first one, uh, the first function uh, uh, will give it, will give as an input uh, a daytime and it will uh, tell me whether it's a weekend or not. And for the second one, there will be a filter. So I'm going to give a data frame, going to specify the timestamp, and then I will specify the start date and the end date. This is just to filter the, the, the data frame uh, to get a specific timestamp. And then in the next step, so I'm going to define two functions. That will be uh, the function to create a table called the pickup filter, and the second one will be the drop off feature. So for the pickup feature, as I mentioned, we're gonna call the function to filter and get specific uh, or subset of my data. And then I'm gonna uh, call this uh, the pickup zip. I'm gonna, I will have a window of one hour and a slide in by 15 minutes. And this will help me to get the fair amount. And then they compute, they compute the number of uh, pickups. Of course, I will uh, sell. I will uh, get at the end the pickup zip, the uh, the timestamp, the mean fare, and the count trips, the the count of trips. That's for the pickup feature. For the drop off feature, that will be the same thing. This time, we're gonna get the number of trips uh, for to the for a window of thirty minutes, and whether it was uh, at the end of trip was a weekend or not. And now what we now that we have those two functions. I'm gonna uh, get my two my two data frames. So the first one I will give it uh, as data frame the row data, the time step column it's the pickup day time, and I'm, I will I will give uh, a start and end date to get the data for only one month for ge for January data. And same things apply for the drop off feature, the same row data, but different timestamp. And of course, you get the data for January. And let me show you now uh, how the data looks like. So I will have 
uh, the zip, the timestamp, the main fare, you know, for a window for one hour, and of course the count of trips. So of course I could have displayed the drop off uh, feature as well. And now, since it's backed by Unity Catalog, I'm gonna create my catalog, and then I will create my schema. So the catalog is called ML underscore feature underscore store, and then I will create a schema called uh, taxi underscore example. I will call my feature store client, and then I'm gonna create my first, my two first feature store tables by calling the fs dot uh, create table. So I'm calling my catalog, my schema, and the name of my table. Of course, I would need to have the primary keys. So how I'm gonna join this table with the row data? I will have the timestamp, uh, the the timestamp keys. And of course, the data frame I will use to fill the specific table, and of course, the description. And same thing uh, will apply to the to the second table that will be the trip drop off time uh, series feature. So those those uh, five uh, parameters are very very important. And of course, this is the first step. Uh, to create those uh, feature store table. And later, what you can do, you can uh, add the data using what we call the uh, array table. Of course, this can be, over here, this can be the case, you can have a job that each, uh, each month it will compute the new features and then it, they will push those new features to the, to the two features table using the array underscore table and of course, you will need to, to choose which table you're gonna uh, push this new data. So again, my same catalog, uh, same catalog uh, schema, the name of the table, the new data I will input, and then you have the mode merge. Of course, you have two options. You can either merge, which means you're gonna append the new data, or you can override, which means override everything. And this step can be thought as uh, a job that will trigger each month or each day, depending of, uh, on the SLA uh, you want to have. And over here, you see, I'm getting the day, February's data. So in the first time, for the first time, I computed January data, and now I'm adding February, uh, February data as well. And of course, those tables, you can query them as you want, since there are Delta table, you can grant permissions. And um, le let me uh, let me walk you through this uh, through this data. So it's called feature uh, ML underscore feature uh, feature store. So let me show you the data. So it's ML feature store taxi example. And you see, we have the two tables. Of course, you will see the primary key. Uh, you can see it over here. You can see the the history, the the the, the description, and of course, you can also uh, grant the uh, grant the, the permission over here. You can see to whom we're gonna grant permission, whether it's a user or a group, and which kind of uh, permissions. And at the same time, I will go to now to feature store to look for for my specific, uh, so it's called ML feature. Sorry, I should have checked over here. So it's ML feature store. So you see over here, I have my two feature, uh, feature table. So let's click and check. You can see over here when it was created, who created this data, the data source, the last time it was updated. Uh, manage the primary key, you see the zip, and you see over here the uh, the timestamp keys, you will see the producer, whether there is a job. So as I mentioned, you can think about having a job that will update uh, this data in multi base or weekly base. And of course, you can see over here the two, uh, the two features I have uh, mentioned. And now what I will do, now that I have my figures, let's now train the model. So this function will just uh, get me the latest model, uh, model version. 
And now what I will do, I will call my two feature table and I will do a feature, uh, I will do a feature, uh, a feature lookup. And this, this step is, uh, is very, very important. Why? Because this feature lookup is a function that will allow you to retrieve the values of a feature from uh, an entity. And of course, it uses uh, a feature table to find the latest value of uh, each feature at, of course, at a given date. And we have also something very, very important over here. So you see, I will write the name of the table, the feature, which is what, which features I want to take, the lookup key to join, and the timestamp uh, lookup key. And the timestamp lookup key is a property that you can set uh, on a feature table to enable the point in time correctness. So this, uh, this point in time correctness to enable this, you need to, to configure your feed, your Databricks feature store to include a timestamp column in all the features table. And this timestamp column is used to track the time at which the value of each feature is valid. And this is very, very important. So we'll do this twice for the, the pickup time and the, the drop off uh, drop of time. And after joining, so I will just end in case I have some uh, pipelines running and I will start run. Of course, I would exclude those, uh, the, the pickup uh, the, the, the pick uh, date, date time and the drop of date time. And I'm gonna train, uh, call the function create training, uh, create training set, which is also a very, very important functions in uh, when it comes to feature store. So if these functions allow you to create a training set for uh, machine learning models using the feature stored in uh, in feature store and of course it takes three uh, parameters so the list of the table the start time and you can also optionally add the sql feature that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be applied and then i'm gonna of course train uh, get this training set low loaded and let me show you how uh, the data uh, looks like so we see the trip instance, uh, the pickup zip, drop off zip, the mean fare, window one hour, the country, window one hour to country, drop off is weekend, and the fair amount. And the next step, I will go and train, uh, train my model. So you see over here, I'm getting the columns, I'm transforming this the data frame to a pandas, uh, this Spark data frame to a pandas data frame. I'm doing generating the test. Uh, and trains and training. We're gonna enable the auto log, and then we're gonna train. Uh, we're gonna train the model, and after training the model, we need to log the model on uh, a registered model name. So for my case, uh, I'm specifying this model registry will be called taxi example fair underscore uh, unity catalog. I will log the model, and after logging the model, I can now. Uh, Score uh, or start scoring in a batch, uh, batch inference, and of course this data will show the uh, the uh, the fair amount. So that's the fair amount that trip the trip this uh, pick up the drop of the drop of uh, drop of the. And the next step, what I will do, I will now do or run the prediction using the latest. In case, for example, I have multiple models, I will, use, I will use the latest model to run uh, the prediction. So here I'm using the model URI and of course uh, the data frame that I'm gonna use to run uh, to run the prediction. So now I can just go and view the taxi fare predictions and get the, uh, the results. And I can go back over here. Uh, I'm gonna click on Feature store again, call the ML, ML feature store. And you see, I have this model, which is pushed to taxi underscore example, fair underscore uh, unity catalog. And I have this model one. So you can see everything through this uh, feature store uh, through this feature store UI, and over here you can see the the example. So over here, uh, the fair amount predicted was seventy three, and the the actual uh, amount was sixty one. Uh, same thing for this one, sixty seven. I got uh, seventy three, and and so on. So that was 
everything regarding uh, feature source. Thank you for, for thank you for watching this video.